Alrighty guys, big news in regards to PayPal. This was a tweet, if they still call it a tweet, now it's called X, uh, that Alex Chris sent out there a few hours ago, okay? This is big. He says, our preliminary PayPal numbers from Thanksgiving through Cyber Monday show an impressive pace of spending with customers. They processed approximately 400 million transactions. Now, I'm interested to know, is this just the PayPal side or does this include Venmo or other businesses or things like that? Or is this, you know, I, I'm, I'm, that I'm not very clear about. But he says they processed approximately 400 million transactions through, from Thanksgiving through Cyber Monday. They put $8 million back in customers' hands with cash back plus savings. Cyber Monday was the largest shopping day of the year with approximately $5.8 billion in total payment volume in 87 million transactions, right? So obviously PayPal putting up some pretty booming numbers and we've heard from others they are putting up booming numbers as well. So it's not like PayPal's the only one, but um, definitely good. And I love the transparency of Alex Kriskus going out there and telling the world like what's going on here, right? And I can tell you, I ordered a few things from a few different websites and I just love the PayPal experience when you go to checkout. Like it's one of my favorite things. Like I look specifically for PayPal now because it's so dang easy. You know, I was putting my... Um, my almost two-year-old for a, a nap, right, yesterday, and uh, I wanted to order a few things on Cyber Monday on a couple websites, right, and I wasn't buying my credit card, I wasn't buying anything like that, and so it was nice, like on Foot Locker, for instance, just literally check out with PayPal, and boom, all my en info's entered in, everything's ready to rock and roll, and I can just pay seamlessly, don't have to worry about going to get my credit card, and entering all the numbers, and entering in my shipping address, none of that BS, like, and then the same exact thing, I was able to do it with that with Nordstrom as well, check out with PayPal, it's done literally within five Five seconds within five seconds everything's ready to rock and roll my address is in credit cards in don't have to worry about any of that stuff man and so such a seamless process overall and i think you know as the years tick on i think more and more people are going to find like how great of an experience it really is overall i absolutely love it by the way completely random question should i buy these shoes or not if there's anybody that has a you know let's call it taste in shoes I, this is totally, you know, not my normal style. These 1977 vintage uh, Nikes. What do you guys think? I thought that was a good deal for 63 bucks, but it's very different. Let me know. Are those, are, are, you know, do those have the drip, man, or no drip? Okay, let me know. No, PayPal's starting to run big. This stock's up nearly 15% just in the past month. That's a considerable move in a very short amount of time in regards to PayPal, right? Here's what I'm thinking as far as me buying more shares of the stock overall, right? My thought process has been, I need to get to 2,000 shares in the public account, right? And I own uh, PayPal and other portfolios as well, including the Patreon portfolio. PayPal is actually my biggest stock. I am considering maybe that's not enough shares, just to be quite honest. I, you know, I might go to 2,000 shares and then go all out above 2,000 shares. I might not be done buying PayPal. It really is going to come down to, do I have better opportunities in 2024 or not? I'm hoping to get to 2,000 shares before the end of this year, and I think I should be able to get there in regards to PayPal, but um, I don't know, man. I, I might have to seriously consider just continue to buy the stock, and even if it goes to 70, 80, 90, 100, 110, 120, I'm going to have to consider just continue to buy the stock and buy the stock, especially if as these quarters tick on, I like the progress that Alex Chris is making in the company, and I like the revenue and the EPS numbers he puts up over the next few quarters. I mean, it could be very well that PayPal is just my best investment opportunity right now. It could be. And so that's something I'm considering. All right, so PayPal, it's probably the best time ever to buy. So they first start out by making some, some you know, uh, let's call it points around forward P, right? And talking about trades at about 11 times forward P. And that's one of the most attractive things right off the bat when it comes to uh, PayPal, right? It is, it's a company that's growing top line. It's growing its bottom line actually much quicker. But it's trading at like 11 times forward P, which is, you know, extremely low. Like usually you would expect like a non-growth company to be, you know, somewhere in that 11 range. That's a very, very low, very low valuation. He goes in talking about it's a very resilient business model, which it, it is. I mean, you know, it's been a very tough consumer environment this past year. E-commerce, everything like that. And for PayPal to be putting up the type of growth they've been putting up, this latest quarter non-gap net revenues were up 9%. Operating uh, income on non-GAAP basis up 8%, and then uh, non-GAAP EPS was up 20%. It's very, very impressive, right? He talks about total payment volumes increased 13% on an FX neutral basis. Goes through transaction and account activity, transaction margin dollars, free cash flow. 
valuation again, which I think is, you know, extremely compelling right now. I, you know, I don't think he talks about price to sales ratio and kind of looking at it on a price to sales ratio, price to book value. My personal opinion on that is um, I, I don't think those are the most relevant ways to value PayPal. I think forward P is the best way to look at PayPal and kind of figure out if you're getting a steel deal here or not. And also projecting out kind of future growth rates based upon what you're paying for the entire company today. And that's where it gets very undervalued, right? So right here, he's looking at PayPal's uh, EV to cash flow 18 times versus obviously these other ones that are significantly above where PayPal's at. He talks about strong balance sheet, large buybacks, which absolutely the company's going to be able to buy an immense amount of shares back over this next several years. Takeaway, PayPal uh, transformed from an expensive growth company to a value play with a moderate growth. The first signs of a new CEO are promising in the straightforward attitude with a key role in changing the business for the better. The decline in transaction margin is slowing down and could reach a turning point in the coming quarters along with a decrease in active accounts. While the cost base of PayPal remains high, Alex is planning to make the company leaner, more efficient, driving greater innovation. Yeah, Alex, I mean, he, he mentioned profitable growth so many times in that conference call. Uh, that's really where his mind's at and that's where his focus is, right? PayPal is a cash flow machine and Venmo has become a verb, absolutely, because they own PayPal and Venmo. Even if Alex's efforts do not play out, the stock could see limited downside from here due to large share buybacks and discounted valuation. I rate PayPal a strong buy at today's prices. I feel rather confident that the new CEO will perform well considering his passion and drive to create value. The stock price is currently rather stagnant as investors are waiting to see more of Alex. Once progress is visible over the next few quarters, we should start to see positive momentum. Yeah, I think there's going to be a lot of positive momentum that comes into not only the company, but the stock price as well in 2020. 24. And um, I think this will go from being a very disliked, hated stock to a very beloved love stock. And, and things flip fast in the market. I mean, they flip very, very fast. We go back six, seven years ago, you know, PayPal was kind of seen as okay, you know, good company. It was liked by Wall Street. We go back three years ago, Four years ago, it was suddenly a loved company. It was one of the most loved companies in the market. Today, it's a it's extremely hated stock by, by Wall Street. You know, things flip around pretty quickly, and the sentiment can change in a stock very quickly. And when I see PayPal, I see growth levers all over the place. Between PayPal, Venmo, Braintree, and inside each of those businesses, there's so many growth levers. And I'm talking about in terms of revenue, in terms of bottom line, a lean, efficient organization. I mean, my gosh, like, you know, I sleep very well at night buying PayPal. Guess what? Today, I bought PayPal. I bought PayPal shares literally today. And I'm going to continue to buy PayPal shares at least through the remainder of this year. And likely, I'll stop buying at some point in the first quarter of next year. So, yeah, man, there's there's growth levers all over this company. And you might say, what is my long-term price target for PayPal stock? When I say long-term price target, I'm talking in the next three years. You want to know it? It is 150 plus. 150 plus easily. I think that's pretty in the bank. I'm thinking more 200 in the next three years. We'll see. We'll see how it all plays out. And so in today's video, I reacted to a bunch of different things. And, and I also gave it my price target up randomly in that video of like, I think PayPal's going to be $150 plus in 36 months from now. Okay. It's very possible it could be that a whole lot sooner, but that's kind of my prediction right now. How do I get there? It's math, 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 okay? So 2026, I have them doing pretty easy earnings per share of $7 based upon the revenue growth rates I have, based upon kind of where the company's growing their EPS right now versus where I think they're going to grow it in a few years from now, um, based upon how many shares I think they're going to buy back over the next few years. I think $7 is pretty in the bag for 2026. Now, 2026, I think the company should command an easy PE of about 25. Right now, it's at like an 11. Stupid. It's, 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 it's mind-blowingly doesn't make any sense, okay? When you're growing the growth rates PayPal is and you've got the sticky business model you have, you should not be trading at 11 forward P. People will soon realize, probably within the next 12 months, you won't even have to wait three years. In the next 12 months, people will realize that was silly. We traded PayPal at an 11 forward P. That was silly, Okay. Visa usually trades at 25-ish times, 25 to 30 times. So I think, and I think when I look at PayPal's business model between PayPal, Venmo, and Braintree, I think it's just as sticky as Visa. So I think 
25-ish PE is about right for PayPal in 2026. And I think they'll have a lot more respect by then. Obviously, Alex Chris will have been there several years, right? Which, if you run $7 EPS, which is a cake number for them, 25 PE, you're at $175 stock price in 2026, by the way. This is supposed to be 2026, not 2025, right? So $175 stock price in 2025, yeah. That's why I say 150 you know, at this time in 2026, three years out is, uh, I'm very confident in that, right? Very confident. Now, now, by the way, it doesn't need, PayPal doesn't even need to go there to, for me, this to be a successful investment. Like if PayPal even doubled over the next three years, which is extra, extra cake in my opinion, which is like 110. I mean, still like we made crazy money on that crazy money on PayPal shares. That would be like a six figure plus gainer for me. But Ultimately, I think it's going to 150 plus in the next 36 months. I think the bigger question is, is it more 150, more like 200 or 250? That's kind of my opinion and perspectives there, right? Never mind, if we're at a lower interest rate environment at that particular time, obviously people are willing to pay a lot more for, for companies in P ratios than currently in this market where, you know, people are very, uh, let's just call it very reluctant to pay up for anything in this market because you can get five plus percent in treasuries right now, right? That won't last forever. All right, Palantir. Palantir, by the way, the deal is pin common down there. Palantir stock. Okay, so Palantir, you know, obviously it's, it's had a tremendous year. Uh, we're up 117% now in the stock in the public account of $57,000. The stock has been doing very well overall. I bought this stock. I've seen, I've bought shares as low as 718. I paid as much as 1650 for shares. This kind of shows my conviction in the, the stock in general and the company in general that I've bought shares anywhere between $7 and 1650 just to be quite honest. It, it basically shows that if the stock's $15, $16, I still think it's a good deal even at those sorts of prices. If I didn't think it was a good deal, I wouldn't be buying. 952 I wouldn't have been buying at 952 unless I thought it was a good deal, right? So I just think that's important. Now, we have stolen some level of gains from the future. If you're wondering how Palantir stock's going to do in 2024 and beyond, like there's no doubt, right? The stock's up 199% year to date. Now, that does not mean we've stolen all the gains from the future. That's an important thing to remember. Like great companies go on great runs over time, right? And sometimes these great companies can have great year after great year after great year, not just in regards to their business fundamentals, but also in regards to their stock price, okay? But there's no doubt when you, when you go up like 200% a year, like you've stolen some level of gains from the future. No different than if the S&P 500 was to go 30% tomorrow. Well, we've stolen a lot of gains in the S&P 500 from the future, right? No, in regards to Palantir, here's the deal, okay? This stock can still be an animal in 2024, but we need a situation to transpire here, okay? Analysts actually don't have the craziest expectations for Palantir to, to, to come through with next year. 19.5% revenue growth expected, less than 19% EPS growth, which is not very good. We need an NVIDIA-type moment. I'm not talking about as crazy as an, as an NVIDIA-type moment, but if we get a moment where, let's just call it, you know, like this year wasn't supposed to be that exciting of a year for NVIDIA. You go back to this time last year, most analysts were not expecting some sort of super exciting year for NVIDIA. And obviously the AI hardware wave came and you know, the rest is history, right? Now, in regards to Palantir, most people aren't expecting like that big of a pickup in business. I mean, this is, you know, 2023 is not even a big AI year really for Palantir. It's for the chip side and the hardware side, but not really for the software side. That's really coming in 2024 and beyond, right? And so this year, 16% revenue growth expected, but then only up to 19%. That's not a big boost up. If we have some sort of game-changing moment here where the revenue growth rates and the EPS growth rates are far exceeding where analysts are at, then we could be in a, in a situation where Palantir goes on another beast run 2024 as well, okay? And next thing you know, it's a $30, $35, 40 stock. That is certainly possible, but we got to come through with the numbers. Now, if we just come through with these sleepy numbers analysts have, I, I, don't think, I don't think Palantir will have a big year in 2024. We've got to come in, knock the, the, the cover off the ball. We come in and do that. We'll, we'll have another beast year in 2024. Is it going to be 200% up? I don't know about that. But could we have another 50 to a 75% gain? Sure. If we come in and crush these numbers, absolutely. Okay. Now, with that being said, some executives sold some shares here, including the CFO sold multi-million dollars worth of stock. Now, something very important, something very important is right down here. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's, it's really small text, so I do apologize. This transaction represents an automatic sale of shares to cover required tax withholding obligations in connection with the vesting and restricted stock units. 
all sales were conducted in compliance with the reporting person's rule, okay, of the trading plan. So, you know, when it comes to these sorts of sales, like this, this sale probably would have went through uh, this week if the stock was at nine dollars, seven dollars. So when you see sales like this and these automatic sales, like you could think like, oh, that must mean the CFO thinks the numbers are going to be bad or, you know, they must be doing something bad at the company or maybe they think it's overvalued. Like these guys sell shares at all different sorts of prices. Like I like, you know, whether the stock was $19, $9 or $900, like those shares could have probably been sold. And so that's just something that food for thought in regards to the situation. People always think it's the end of the world. It's, it's, it's over for us. It doesn't work like that at all. And if you look at great tech companies, you know, or any great company for that matter, okay, any of the companies you respect, uh, you know, they, that have done tremendous over the, the last 10 years, okay, the Amazons and the Googles and the Microsofts and the Apples and go through all those companies. Look at the last 10 years. Tell me what you find. Massive amounts of shares sold by executives year after year after year after year. Every single one of those was a bad financial decision. Every single damn one of them, just to be quite frank. But yet they did it. And so to run to conclusions that, okay, this means the end of the world, it doesn't work like that, okay? You know, Microsoft executives sell pretty much every single year. And Microsoft stock just hit a new all-time high. <laughs> so it is what it is. Like, that, that's just it's part of the process, right? And that's a big part of their compensation in a lot of these executives. A lot of times these executives make way more in options, in, in shares that, that basically vest for them than they make in their salaries. And a lot of times it's substantially more. I mean, I've seen it be as, I've seen it be like 10x, if not more than 10x. Like in terms of what their base pay is versus what they get in share compensation, it's like a night and day difference, okay? So that's that in regards to Palantir, okay?